Father, we thank you for a people who are devoted to your ministry, doing things your way, walking in the Holy Ghost as you've shown us in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and by example through Apostle Paul and Peter. Father, in every example that we have of those in Old Testament and New Testament that walked with you in the realms of the Spirit. And so, Father, we thank you that tonight we have people that are so dedicated in this place to walking in the same way. Hallelujah. That they're not willing to have another ministry, another Jesus, another alternate concept of what it means to serve you and live for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for this, such a devotion. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, everybody that's here and is watching by the web, we just welcome you tonight. And I want to talk to you. It's going to be a little bit of an advanced school of the Spirit. And so you're going to have to listen well because you could listen wrong if you're not careful. And, uh, you know, and it's just so important that we have people that are just dedicated to walking in the life and ministry of Jesus because that's what God's called us to do. If we walk in some other kind of life, if we're not earnest about having the life and ministry of Jesus, the one that Jesus showed us in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the one that was modeled for us in the life of Peter and James and, and John and, and modeled for us in the life of Paul and modeled for us in the life of Philip, modeled for us in every character of the Old Testament that walked in the Spirit and the power of God was manifested through their life, then we've got a bunch of people that are doing something different than what the Bible is talking about. It's living an alternate reality than what the Word of God is describing. And there's really no way that there's anybody that's going to be able to have this kind of a life, this kind of life that God has formed and, des and destined for us to have in Christ Jesus, unless you're just absolutely committed to it. You've got to want this more than anything else. You know, once again, a big part of it is that everybody's looking at their own human limitations. They're thinking about how that, you know, they've never raised the dead before. How could you possibly ever think of raising the dead? I mean, they've never done a miracle. How could you ever possibly think of doing a miracle? They've never done this. They've never done that. They've never given a word of knowledge. How could you possibly think that you're going to give a word of knowledge that belongs to a special group of unique people? And reality of it, it doesn't. It is the ministry of Jesus. It is the ministry of Jesus that is brought, was brought to him by the power of the Holy Ghost. And it's the ministry of Jesus that is brought to us by the power of the Holy Ghost. And people say, well then, why is it that everyone, why is it then that everyone doesn't have this and doesn't have the full expression of it? The reason being is because that everybody's not hungry for it. If you're hungry for these things, you're going to get to eat. And Father's going to feed you. Everybody's not thirsty for these things. If you're thirsty for these things, you're going to get to drink because Father's going to give you to drink. And it's a hunger and a thirst that goes beyond the hunger and thirst you have to have a house, the hunger and thirst you have to have a car, the hunger and thirst that you have to be successful in life, in your career, or your vocation. And my goodness, we see a lot of expression, and praise God for it. People need to have a, a, a commitment to achieve things. But Father's called us to a much higher commitment of higher achievement. And, and for me, and I'm just going to say this by way of just a simple little note, I've discovered, I mean, you, if you ask my kids, you find out from my kids how, how important it was for me for them to be very disciplined in academics. You'll find out that they're going to, everyone tell you it was very, very important. I mean, I'm going to tell you right now, and if it's done properly, then they end up like my kids do, prophesying full of the Holy Ghost, flowing in ministry, leading the charge in the kingdom of God. If it's done wrong, then they're going to end up skewed, okay? But, you know, I look, I've always taken Daniel in the Bible as an example of what it looks like when you are dedicated to being disciplined and seeking knowledge and understanding and developing, being developed with respect to these things because he was smarter than everybody else that was in the land. But look at how he had a walk with God because the walk with God took preeminence. His hunger, his passion, his thirsting, all of his knowledge and all of his understanding all fed in to his relationship with God. Understand that. It's not knowledge and understanding and wisdom that leads you astray from God. It's that which feeds into this life in the Spirit. And so it's very important for me to just grab a hold of you and help you understand how to take your entire life and make sure that it's serving the kingdom of God. It's feeding into the things of the Spirit, of the kingdom of God, of what God's called you to uh, to be. He didn't call us to be something other than Jesus. He called us to be those who walk in him and live in him. Jesus said this is the terms of the covenant. Covenant. 
He says, you live out my life and I'll live in you. In other words, you dwell in me and I'll dwell in you. Uh, John chapter 15, verse 4. We're called to follow him. We're called to imitate God. Jesus has called us to take up our cross, deny ourselves, and follow him. And uh, what I want to talk to you tonight about really, by and large, within the framework of functioning and the gifts of the Spirit, really is about that verse of Scripture and specifically about denying yourself in the context of denying yourself, okay? And understanding that it's about following him. It's about pursuing the things of the kingdom. And then out, out of that is the outworking of signs and wonders and miracles and the demonstration of the power of God. It's not about having, you know, people over for dinner on Friday night so you can show how to do a miracle. And you can give them a reading. You know, it's so that you can show off your tricks. You can pull your rabbits out of the hat, so to speak. This is about advancing the kingdom of God. This is the calling card to bring people to Jesus. I was just so blessed recently to have uh, Sandy, um, she's starting meetings, her and um, James are starting meetings in Escondido. Praise God, they, found, they went out, they found a place. They were doing this before, they're back on track again, praise God. We've got to have people who've got kingdom vision that says, look, I'm not going to have a limitation. I'm not going to tell you why I can't do it. I'm not going to sit around and analyze the thing, you know, and now paralysis through analysis to the point that I taught myself out of it. Wait a minute. God has given me a charge to go do these things. I'm going to find a way to get them done. Praise God. Well, what's going to happen in the midst of that? His father's going to do great signs and wonders as we allow him to teach us, as we learn, just say, with total abandonment, I'm going to do the ministry of Jesus. I'm going to do what Jesus did, okay? I'm going to do what he commissioned his disciples to do. And anybody he sent out to preach, he told them how to go preach. You know, Jesus trained them. His school of ministry was different from most schools of ministry. His school of ministry was go cast out the devils, lay hands on the sick, you know, go heal the diseased and the tormented, go raise the dead, go tell the crippled to walk, the blind to see, the deaf to hear. Then this is the school of ministry. Hallelujah. And, um, you know, as, I'm gonna, as I get older, I'm, the Father's going to let me be more a part of school of ministry, but I'm not going to be a part of a school of ministry where everybody's sitting and spinning their propellers, theorizing about who God is. You know what I'm saying? I have a friend of mine in Nepal. He said, I'm, I'm, st I'm, stopping, my, I'm stopping my Bible school. He said, because when I get Bible school students, they come in, from different parts of Nepal and India and Asia, and they're all fired up. And then they get in here and they sit in here for about six months, and then they turn into a bunch of mega heads. All they're doing is sitting around calculating about what God thought when he didn't think anything. You know, and they quit going to door to door, and they quit having a burden for the lost, and they quit going out preaching, and they quit doing signs and wonders. Forget about it. I said, well, maybe you need to just do small little things where you do three, four months, and then get them back out. And go, go do the thing. You got, I'll give you three or four months of information that you can go and live off the rest of your life. But just go now and do for, you know, for seven, eight, nine months, something like that. Right? And then come back and we're going to give you three more months. And then this is way the whole school of the spirit and, and school of ministry is now being advanced in a practical application. Are you listening to me? Praise God. Most people learn best by watching anyways, by example. And that's the way Jesus taught. Wouldn't it be great to have schools of the Spirit, school ministry, rather, and Bible schools that were fashioned after the way Jesus did it? I figure he knows best, right? And he just said, okay, Bible school, here we go. We're going to go to the next meeting. The whole Bible school went with them. They did the meeting. They <laughs> preached. Hallelujah. Signs, wonders, and miracles took place. Huh? Then they went to the next meeting. And they did this for a while. And he said, now you guys go do your own meetings. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So, ha! Huh, I'm going to teach you tonight, by the help and the grace of God, at least seed you tonight with an understanding about how to so move into the divine compulsion of things and divine unction that you leave the human interest and, and, and human concern behind. This is hard. Okay, this is hard. And I'm going to start off with an example. How many of you were here uh, Sunday morning when they ushered in Do Dominique and she could barely walk because she had fallen on a ladder. She fell off a ladder hit her back, hip went out of socket, so they just kind of brought her in. She was like hurting in pain, tears in her eyes. She could hardly move, okay? So what's the first thing that's going to happen in most situations with people? 
human concern is going to kick in and, oh, sweetheart, oh, poor dear. Oh, is it hurt really bad? Oh, what hurts right now? And you're going to get so convoluted and so compromised, getting all up inside the hurt and the pain out of something called human compassion and human concern that is going to keep you from moving forward. Okay? So what you're going to have to understand is God the Holy Ghost is going to so build you up in faith that is going to become irrelevant, but it's always going to be there potentially compromising you. Hallelujah. So just look at what happened. First, number one thing is this is the end of the meeting. I've, been, I've preached. I've been flowing in the Holy Ghost. I've prayed for a whole bunch of people. Now I think it was about time to go home, and here comes this person that is basically all messed up. Okay? But I'm fired up. I'm full of faith, and all I'm about right now is the ministry of Jesus, signs, wonders, and miracles, and demonstration of the power of God. I'm not about human concern. I'm not the doctor. I'm not your, you know, your local physician, your therapist, or anything else. I'm here, Holy Ghost men of God, for signs and wonders and miracles. And if you're coming towards me, that means you're ready to get healed. Because that's my identity, and that needs to be your identity. Otherwise, it's another Jesus. Otherwise, it's another gospel. Otherwise, it's another ministry. It's not anything to do with anybody who is an example to us. Old Testament and New Testament is moving the power of God, and that's just the facts. It doesn't matter whether it upsets you or sets you. It's just the facts. It's just the way it is. And so being in that place and being in that state called the state of the Holy Ghost, in the realms of the Holy Ghost, in the realms of the Spirit, built up in the faith, you know, I am absolutely, I am totally detached. I have, no, I have no attachment. I'm totally detached. It's just like if you want to move in faith for finances, you've got to be totally detached from the finances. Totally detached. Hey, you know, I love to use the example of Abraham's great compassionate love for Ishmael. Tell me that Abraham didn't love his firstborn son, and I'm going to tell you you have no idea the righteousness of Abraham and who he was in character and nature. That was expressed through his life as he was taught by God. He loved Ishmael. But when God told him to send Ishmael away, he with total detachment and with total abandonment was able to take Ishmael, not load up a bunch of camels with gold and silver. He could have taken, he could have put enough gold and silver on the camels to take care of Ishmael for the rest of his life. He could have put enough food and provision on camels to take care of Ishmael to get them wherever it is they're going. He could have sent bodyguards. He could have sent, you know, tents. He could have sent servants and a great entourage. No, he sent them out without anything. He did not give them a camel. He did not give them one coin. He sent them out with enough provision for a day, food and water. He thrust them into the care of God, total detachment, knowing that God is a better provider than he himself is. That's where we fell. Many of us fell right there. We don't ever give in a move. We don't ever get to move in faith because we're all convoluted. We're all wrapped up in our human concern and our human provision and our human need and our human calculation and our analysis of it and we're conflicted and we can't move in faith. God has not become bigger than us. God's provision has not become bigger than our provision. God's word has not become bigger than our word. God's faithfulness has not become bigger than our answers. And this is where we get convoluted. We've got to learn how to get detached. And I'm going to tell you right now, the only way to get, learn how to get detached is to start praying in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> it's far more than some kind of Pentecostal expression for charismatics. It is an expression of the divine power of God to teach us how to think different, act different, come over into a whole other realm of reasoning to where we so filled up in faith, we'll say that the dead rise up again. You know, I've been in so many situations. I can tell you about so many situations of what, we're, what I'm talking about that just happened this Sunday. And I don't have to go back into his, history. I can tell you about some things that happened today. But the bottom line, I'm going to tell you about what just something that many of you got to eyewitness. And, and if you weren't eyewitness witness of it, the cameras were still rolling. You can see it. You can watch it. You can see the power of God at work. We're here to demonstrate the power of God. And, um, you know, people talk about, well, what about the people who didn't get healed? I can tell you 101 reasons why they didn't get healed. But I can tell you one big reason why they should have. Because Jesus Christ is the healer, the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he's here to heal them. So you can talk about all the reasons that they didn't get healed. I'm going to talk about the reasons why they are able to be healed and should be healed. And, you know, we will help by God's help and grace, help people work through their issues, understand what the challenges are, what the things that are holding them back. But I'm going to tell you right now, if you get serious about, if you've got sickness or disease or problems in your life, and you get serious about getting healed and you don't go for alternatives, you're going to get healed. You're, you're going to get healed. Eventually, God's going to help you work through all your problems, all your dysfunction, spiritual dysfunctionality. <laughs> Truly. 
All the places where you're not trusting him. Truly, where, it is, where you do it yourself. Where you trust in yourself. And people want to get all sad about that. Oh, you're making me feel bad about me. I know, I know, I know, I know. I know that we always want to have the best spin on our own lives. And so we always want to make ourselves look good because we want to be happy. Because if we make ourselves look bad, we're sad and nobody wants to be sad. So leave me alone. No, I'm not going to leave you alone. You're in school and you're in training and we need to teach you how to do it right. We're going to declare these things to you because you're going to get it. If you press in for it, if you get discouraged and you're just going to walk off the field and go, I just can't do nothing, then you know what? You're not going to do anything. But there's performers here. There's more than Olympians here. There's the, these are the people of God who's running a race to win. Amen. 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 Who are obeying God, who are pressing in, who strive for masteries lawfully to do it God's way, to do it right, instead of some kind of shortcut, some kind of cheating way. But at any rate... Learning how to get the task, learning how to take all he had and thrust it into his care. Because, <laughs> you know, that was just setting him up and getting him ready and strengthening him. First of all, you've got to know God to do that. If you don't know God, you can't do that. You don't know how good he is. If you don't know how faithful he is, if you don't know how com committed he is, you don't know how real he is, you can never do that. But when you do, oh man, he's, 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 he's well taken care of. I'm thrusting him in the hand, hands of the Father. That set him up to ultimately offer Isaac upon an altar. To ready to kill him because he knew that God was able to raise him up. He knew, he knew that one way or there, he won either way. If, he's, if he gets killed, he's getting raised up. If he doesn't get killed, we got him. Either way, we're winning here because God's promises are such that they're unreproachable. He is, God has just, he's got no dings in his armor. I mean, and his level of integrity is through the roof. His faithfulness is a commitment to perform those things which he's promised. is absolutely solid. And so, you know, just helping you understand this, that you get over into this realm of the Holy Ghost, he teaches you in this boldness that the life and the purposes and the will of the Father is bigger than any other life, and big, big, bigger than any other purpose, and big, bigger than any other will. So I looked at her. She came over. I said, what's wrong with you? Tell me what happened to you. I wanted to hear her speak a little bit, see where she was at. And she, could, she was just grunting it out. I fell off the ladder and... Hit my back, and then her mom was helping her out, telling about what happened and all these injuries, and you could see the cuts and the bruises. I said, take hold of my hands. Okay, because she's, she's not able to walk, right? She just basically, it hurts to even put pressure on her feet. First of all, she can't, one arm, she can't move. I said, so take hold of my hand. She barely stretches out. You know what I'm doing? I'm not allowing any human compassion to be involved here. You know what I'm doing? I'm actually submitting the Holy Ghost who's not allowing any him and compassion to be involved here, and I'm agreeing with him. I'm not going to say, oh, well, this might hurt you, but uh, try to reach out your hand. Is that okay? Does that feel okay? I don't want to hurt you. Now, if I'm doing that, forget about it. Nothing's going to happen. Reach out your hand. Come hold of me. She reached out of her hand. I hold her hands for a minute. I said, now put both weight on both. I put all your weight on both feet. She starts off, got that little bit of stray on her face. I'm not, a, I'm not moved. I'm detached. Why? I'm in the miracle. I'm in the answer. I'm not living in the circumstance. I'm not living in the sympathy of the situation. You hear me? I'm not living. My, I'm not compromised. I'm not conflicted, hooked up with their human need and human concern. I'm rather hooked up with what God said he's going to do. I'm over in a realm of boldness of signs and wonders and miracles. I've embraced the life and ministry of Jesus. Otherwise, get out of the way and let somebody else take the place. Listen, I'm here standing in this place totally consecrated to not another ministry and not another Jesus, but Je the ministry of Jesus. Jesus and, the, and him and him alone. I'm here to do what every model of anybody who walked with God has done. I'm consecrated and committed to it. I'm not going to break down right now and have a sympathy attack. <laughs> Are you listening? <laughs> I said, now you take a walk. I take a step. And she took a little step. I said, now you take another step. I said, now start jumping up and down. Huh? And we walked around for a while. I said, pretty, pretty soon you're going to be running. And then I say that. I said, pretty soon. I started to say I started to say, I did say, I said, by this afternoon, you're going to be running. And I said, oh, no, it's already this afternoon. And then it all, what happened? What happened? Then she began to, then she began to run. Then she began to dance. Then she began to jump up and down on her own, all happy about it, wave her arms. Huh? And then she left the place all excited. Sunday night, we had her come up on the platform and dance around for everybody. <laughs> well, there was people in the meeting. They didn't know why is this girl coming up, dancing around on the platform. How shameful. She's on the platform dancing around because, it, because the, she, it's bearing witness to what all Father did that morning. Um, and so, 
You know, really, people, there's so many things in every dimension of our lives where human concern kicks in, and it messes the whole thing up. You should believe in God for finances and as you're wringing your hands. Oh, no, we're going to die. It messed the whole thing. Oh, it's not going to work. What are we going to do? What's our backup plan? Forget about it. You're all wrapped up in human concern. You're going to have to go to a prayer meeting till you break through to a realm where God the Holy Ghost is your provider. He's bigger than anything else. And you're not going to live in poverty. You believe you me. Listen, there is a place where people go after wealth on their own. Well, that's terrible, man. You're just messing it all up. And then they may try to make it, you know, they're going to make riches for the kingdom. I mean, give me a break. That's not the way it works. You obey God. You pursue the kingdom of God. And now he gives you wealth. I'm going to tell you around. Faith begins to happen in a, in a realm where Father begins to resource and provide us. I know great men and women missionaries who died on the foreign field poor. Poor. Because they never understood how to move into faith for finances because somebody told them it was God's will for them to be poor, naked, and miserable. It was for them to be poor and just depend upon whatever came in. And they never laid hold on faith. They couldn't believe in God who was the provider. Hallelujah. So in every area of life this is happening, but especially when it comes to signs and wonders and miracles and our own particular special opinions and insights about people because we've all got them. And all that's going to do is get in the way of anything that God would have us do. There was a, I love this particular example. Um, some of you may have heard me give it before. You're going to hear me give it again. But I was in Nepal, and uh, we were having a, a pastors and leaders meeting. And, and I don't know, there was, the place was full. The place probably hold three, 4,000 people. And one of the leading ministers that was there, I didn't like him. I just didn't like this guy. I just didn't, we didn't, we didn't, I just didn't like him. I mean, you know, there's just some people that you look at him, you like him, you don't like him because you think there's something wrong there. You know what I'm saying? There's something wrong. Your discernment's kicked in, right? You better watch out that discernment, always playing tricks on you. <laughs> that was, be I'm going to tell you right now, because I'm, I'm just telling, I'm going to make this confession. Okay, this was in my life, it was before I'd given myself to falling in love with a person three seconds after I met, met them. Because I, that, when I gave myself, committed myself, to falling in love with a person three sec within three sec seconds after I met them, it made my discernment a whole lot better, man. All of a sudden, I started getting God discernment instead of my own discernment, huh? The sniff effect, huh? you know, the, like animals, you know, like, I don't know, something's wrong, something's not fit. It's just not that it's nonsense, you know. You know, God speaks out of the realms of love. You can call, we already know what we're supposed to do and how we're supposed to behave ourselves and interact with people. That's already done. It's already done deal. God's already laid it out. You walk in love. You walk in peace. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, you receive a brother. If they call themselves a brother, you receive them as the Lord Jesus Christ and you leave the, left, the rest of the Lord straighten out. Amen. That's just the way it works. And all of a sudden you begin to have insight from heaven instead of, you know, dim sight from men. Are you with me? Has everybody got that? Should I go with that one again? Okay. Dim sight or dim sight? Which one do you want? Okay. At any rate, so here I am. Here I am. Okay. I, this guy, you know, he's a leader of the church. He's done a lot of some great things, but there's just something out of, just not right. And I'm there, I'm standing there on the platform and I'm preaching away, you know, and the power of God's falling and just wonderful things are happening. And I keep getting this tractor beam to this guy. And I'm like, no. I keep getting this tractor beam. I know what the tractor beam effect is all about, where God locks you in on somebody. And as he's locking you in on somebody because he's getting ready to declare something, he's ready to give that download. So I keep getting this tractor beam effect, and I'm trying to look over here, but I can't look over here. So finally, out of my mouth begins to come these words from heaven concerning this man of God. And now by the Spirit, I get to find out who he is. As I prophesy these things by the Spirit of what God is going to do through him, what the ministry and the anointing is upon his life. Now, my mind is thinking, right? My calculation is saying, this guy is messed up. There's something wrong. God the Holy Ghost is saying, this guy is my servant who I have anointed and who I've appointed at this moment in time to do this thing and that thing and the other thing. Look, I'm going to tell you, God helps us get detached. He helps us break free of whatever we're locked into and especially in that context of here we are flowing in the anointing under that, the authority of heaven, speaking those words that he's filling our mouth to speak by his own power, by his own charge. 
Now, I give you that as an example to recognize that the majority of the things that you're thinking about people is absolutely wrong. <laughs> it is true. Yep. Yeah. The majority of your answers of how you're going to do the job is wrong. Can you just get that? Yeah. Can you just get that? I know that's a hard one to get because you made A's on your papers and sometimes you got to be the teacher told you how bright you were. But I'm going to tell you right now, the majority of the way you think and perceive things is wrong. It's true. You perceive things and you think things based upon your experience, which dictates to your judgment and opinion. It's true. It's true. I mean, so you can be talking and based upon everybody's different experiences. I had one the other day. <laughs> I was standing in line getting ready to get on the airplane. And a guy says, I've lost my wife. I can't find her. I said, well, that's, you certainly don't want to lose your wife. The guy behind me says, says, behind me says maybe he does. <laughs> I spoke out of the situation based upon my experience. He spoke out of the situation based on his experience. <laughs> and they are, that, they are that broad in spectrum. And we got to understand this, people. We don't want to live our life based upon our human experience and what we've been taught by men. We want to live our life based upon a divine experience, what God the Holy Ghost is teaching us. And he wants to form us with his word. And he tells us, tells us all these things in his word. And we modify. We just modify. We are constantly, we are a grandiose divine editors. We're constantly editing what God says and writing our own Bible. For ourselves. We don't read it to anybody else. We only read it to ourselves. <laughs> to everybody else, we just read the Bible and we just, you know, act like we believe everything that we're saying. But we've got our own edited edition about why we don't have to be that way, why we don't have to believe that way, why we don't have to be that radical, we don't have to be that bold, we don't have to be that committed, we don't have to be that consecrated. Hmm? We don't have to be that loving, we don't have to be that joyful, we don't have to have that much peace, we don't have to walk in that much goodness. I can go on and on. Yeah, because we create caste systems for ourselves, for the people around us, for people in the Bible. God doesn't have a caste system. He brought us into oneness. Amen. He brought us in, into an equality together in Him. Hallelujah. God has empowered us. It's demonic to control. Huh? It is divine to empower. God has empowered us as his witnesses. And he's given us all of the resources that we have need. But, uh, but we've got to learn how to walk in them. And there's constantly things where we are bathing ourselves. We're taking like full on, you know, soaking jacuzzis in self-pity. I mean, we're soaping ourselves down and bathing and marinating ourselves in self-absorption and self-concern and self-interest and I didn't get treated right and I'm not being treated fair and I can do more. I know I can because I am me. And it's all about me, me. And the whole world and all of our interactions with the world is interpreted on the basis of me. It's a terrible life to live. And Father wants us to stop that. And another way of describing that is to deny me or to deny yourself. Okay, so no, everybody's not thinking they need to just deny me. <laughs> deny you. And where does that really come down to? Well, the monastics and the ascetics said, well, well, to deny ourselves, we need to go and we need to hide ourselves away in a cave and, and we need to get ourselves up on a big platform and only certain bugs that fly by and, you know, and other weird, crazy things. And we're going to just mortify the deeds of our body by letting maggots grow on our back and whip ourselves and chastise ourselves. And don't, you know, give, you know, I heard a Pentecostal journal, you know, that was written 1920. If you want to get closer to God, don't take as many baths, don't, you know, don't uh, find yourself, you know, being, uh, you know, comforted as much. Make sure things around you are harsh and hard and tough and difficult. Just leftovers from walking upstairs of glass. You know, whipping yourself, mortifying your body. All these interesting ideas that people have that have nothing to do with any other thing than, once again, what man can do for himself how man tries to perfect himself, how man tries to make himself better, rather than with total abandonment, denying yourself and understanding what that means. What does it mean to deny yourself? It means that you're going to obey God. You're going to be his self. You're going to do what he said. You say, well, I don't believe I can... 
work a miracle. God says, work a miracle. Okay, well, I'm not going to listen. I'm not going with me. I'm going to go with him. He told me, these signs shall follow them that believe. This is the marching orders for anybody who believes. In my name you cast out devils. Hallelujah. This, this is my job. This is my assignment. What am I going to do? Walk around and ignore the devils? What would happen to you and I if suddenly we became detached from how many friends we made, and how many people liked, how many people liked us, and how many people thought we were sane and in our right mind? And that's a big deal to us. You know that? It's really a big deal to us to make people or help people believe that we're sane and in our right mind. We really don't want anybody thinking that we're crazy. You know, we just don't. We don't want that. And then it starts getting more refined from there. First of all, you know, the bigger picture, we don't want anybody thinking we're crazy. You know, and it gets all the way to the point that we really want people to be fascinated with us. Wow, they're really cool. They're fascinating. Well, what if you got totally detached from all of that and you started obeying God and every time you saw the activity of demon spirit, you just came right out. You foul spirit of hell. I command you to torment the soul no longer. I'm going to tell you right now, you start getting yourself in word of knowledge. The person that listened to you might be freaked out for a moment, but when they, I tell you, things will start shaking around. The other, look, I, when I was in India, I got totally freaked out. Just one month ago, last month, I got totally freaked out. I got my hand on this guy from India, and I'm telling you right now, it was like every one of the plates in your, that make up your, your brain was lifting and settling. It was like somebody had a rolling pin for kneading bread underneath the skull and rolling it back and forth. I was freaking totally out. I was freaking out. It was just like, whoa, this is crazy, man. I kept my hand there. Okay, I kept my hand there. Bang, he went down. Totally delivered. Totally delivered the powers of darkness. Uh, the other night, uh, yeah, there was a person that came here into the meeting, needed deliverance, and uh, laid my hand on this person, and something very similar started happening. I've never actually, here I got two in a row, one in India and one here in America. Interesting, huh? But the reality of it is, is you and I are called to engage in something so wonderful. And it's not just in the context of the church. You know, as we begin to move in the spirit, as we begin to give ourselves over to the testimony of the gospel, I just so happened to be in a context where it was easy for me to do it and everybody not think I was crazy. You know, it's because everybody thinks you're crazy if you're standing on the street corner hollering out. I did that. I did that for years. I would stand on the street corner and holler out people. And, but now I'm on a platform, it's more prestigious. I got all the, you know, the leaders of the community around me, you know, putting lays on me and you know, flowers all over. And, you know, I'm really, you know, much, 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 much better received and treated. And I'm just declaring the word. And the wild man of the neighborhood, the person that no one could reach, the guy who fought with everybody, who was drunk more times than not, just a young man, with just as much intelligence as anyone else, just demon possessed. He's a wild man. He was like the man of the Gadarene, of Gadaria, a Gadara, the Gadarene. And um, as I was preaching, he started screaming out, Jesus is the true God. People had tried to talk to him about Jesus. He wanted nothing to do with Jesus. He wanted nothing to do with Hinduism. He would mock Jesus. But now he's screaming out, Jesus is the true God. Jesus is the true God. Help me. Help me. A preacher goes out to get him. Out there on the, on the side of the road where he was standing, off just outside of the, the view of the lights. They brought him in. Power of God touched him, delivered him. Reality of it is, people, is you and I can do that on a daily basis. We continually walk by people who are under demon power, under the influence of demon power. We ignore it and don't do anything about it. And the Lord tells us to go cast out devils, go set people free. We want to say a little, we want to give them a little gospel track and say, was a pre would, do you believe in Jesus? And then give them a little spiel about evolution versus creation. Nonsense. That's nothing. That has nothing to do with the ministry of Jesus. That's all head stuff. That's all heady stuff. That's all human stuff. And God's given us the authority and power to break, to destroy mind-blinding spirits. The authority to break off every stronghold of the enemy, to set people free, to unlock the keys of their prison, open up the doors so that they can go out and come to understand what it means to live this life in Him. It's time that we begin to understand how to get detached. We get, but we're compromised because we're attached on the basic things that Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6 we weren't supposed to be attached to. And because we can't get over that, we can't move on with God. So we're attached to, oh, our house, what we're going to eat, what we're going to wear. And after all, you know, God expects for us to, you know, be fervent in business. And you're worse than an infidel and deny the faith if you don't take care of your own. You know, these misapplied verses of Scripture when you've got a thousand telling you to Get yourself completely detached and take no thought for your life. 
Be detached from your life. Let God take care of you. You get detached and God can move in and supernatural provision will come to you right, left, and center. You get detached and quit trying to make yourself God better and God will perfect you. True. That's what Paul says in Galatians. He says, have you begun in the Holy Ghost now to be made perfect by your own human ability? Huh? Is that what he says? Because that's what happens to people. Yeah, they, they don't understand. Wait a minute. I'm going to have to get detached here and quit trying to be my own program manager and whittling out my own little altar here, you know, and making myself acceptable to God and recognize that the one who began this good work in me will finish it. And understand that I'm not perfected by my own human ability. I'm perfected by the same Holy Ghost that I was born by. That as the blood of Jesus Christ brought me in and cleansed me at the very moment. And when I called upon his name, it's that blood that continually cleanses me. And it's the means by which I will find myself cleansed a billion years from now. Well, see these basic things of complete attachment to the human interest in the human realm keeps us from being able to move in the realms of supernatural faith, in the realms of finances, in the realms of miracles and signs and wonders and casting out devils. But what Jesus said is these signs shall follow them that believe. <laughs> this, is the, this is the, right here, this is the credentials of the believer. In other words, he's saying, guys, get busy. This is what you're supposed to be doing. That's what Jesus said. Hallelujah. What Jesus said is if you walk with Papa... And Father dwells in you, and you believe in me. I don't care who you are, anyone, anyone. I, I, I'm really interested in when I hear all these various different theologians try to explain away John 14, 12. You know, you've got to make yourself so stupid, it's like you didn't learn anything to explain this verse of Scripture away. It really is an effort. It's really an effort in learning how and practicing stupidity and complete complete failure to remember everything else you've understood and learned up to this point to try to explain away John 14, 12. If anyone believes, anyone who believes will do these works and greater works. He, Jesus is Jesus talking to us. And he says to us, he, the same Jesus said, said Mark 16, 17, anybody who believes, this is what you're going to do. You're going to do these miracles. You're going to cast out devils. You're going to speak with new tongues. You take up serpents. You drink any dirty thing, it should not hurt you. Hallelujah. You lay hands on the sick and you shall recover. Somebody says to me, they come to me and say, they said to me, well, I've been prayed for many times and I still haven't been healed, but I thought I'd give you a try. I said, you come to the right spot. You come to the right spot. Because I am one of those guys who knows that if I lay my hands on you, you're going to recover. I don't know what those other guys believe, but I tell you what I believe and I don't care what you think. Huh? It's like as... It's like a friend of mine prayed for this woman, didn't pray for, him, didn't pray for her long enough, and she was paralyzed in her right arm. He didn't pray for her long enough. She got cussing mad at him. Can't believe it. Come all this way to get prayed for. And this preacher gives me like just one second prayer. A little touch and a one second prayer. That's it. Amazing. She's complaining and fussing while she's rolling up the window, recognizing that she's no longer paralyzed. <laughs> Had a similar thing happen <laughs> while I was in Norway. Woman had all these had these several problems. She was a, she was the wife of a preacher. Her her brothers were preachers. Her uncles were preachers. Her daddy was a preacher. Her grandfather was a preacher. Her great grandfather was a preacher. Preacher, preacher. She's surrounded by preachers. Dear sweet woman, she tells me of two diseases that she has, it. and and then and then and then um, I tell her I say I said to her I said, well just raise your hands towards heaven. She quickly raised her hands towards heaven. And I began to pray for her. She forgot that she couldn't raise her hand. That she had two broken ribs. She'd just been in an accident and had two broken ribs. Her hand. She forgot to tell me that one. She was so concerned about telling me the longer lasting ones. The ones about her two ruptured discs in her back and something about her kidneys. I wasn't really paying too much attention. I was drunk in the Holy Ghost. I was just... Just confess, tell, me, tell God what you want. I'm, you talk to him, I'm going to lay hands on you. Because that's really basically what it's coming down to. I'm not intellectualizing anything. Tell me what your problem is and let me see if I can come up with a cure. Because I brought the PDR with me. Okay, I brought the divine PDR. What does it say yet? <laughs> Quick medical history. Now I'm saying people just, just talk to Papa what they, what they need. Hallelujah. I'm not even involved in that. 
I'm just waiting to, I'm just waiting to give my Holy Ghost smack. Huh? That's where you lay hands on people. It's not really too much of a heart. It's a lower velocity smack. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Total detachment. Total detachment where you begin to think about the God factor. Total removing yourself out of the equation where your human interest, your self-concern, your self-image, you know, all these things. As I said, human compassion, um, all these, the sympathy. I mean, sympathy will shut you down so quick. I mean, all the empathizers, so, so you know, so keep, keep you from moving in divine compassion. Divine compassion, Jesus was moved with compassion, huh? And he healed everybody. <laughs> That's the kind of compassion that you want. Move with compassion where everybody is set free. You know, we begin to we just understand detaching from these things is absolutely, uh, uh, absolutely essential with moving forward in the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. The God factor. It never can work when it's all about whether or not you got the power. Whether or not, well, I prayed for somebody one time and they got healed, maybe I'll try it again. Or I prayed for somebody one time, they didn't get healed, it's probably not going to happen. Or so-and-so was the most holy person I ever knew and they said that people aren't going to get healed all the time and I don't know why, whether people are going to get healed or whether they're not going to get healed. It's such, who knows? Give me a coin. Let's tip, flip the coin. All of the things that go on, you get compromised. I mean, there's a, con it's a place where you just get committed. You just get committed. There's a place. God has given us the capacity, for example. Yes, yeah, sweet baby. She's crying for the pastor to pray for her. I know that's in every language, every nationality, everywhere I go. I can, it's a per per particular thing that little children do when they need prayer from the pastor. They begin to just cry out in the meeting. Father, touch baby right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You can't stand on a platform and know that the dead will be raised to life again. The blind will see, the deaf will hear, unless you're totally detached from you. You can't send out the bulletin saying, bring them from the hospital. Huh? Well, the old fear factor is going to set in. The, oh, how am I going to do this? Oh, my, I've now built everybody up, and now they're coming with expectation, and now I can't let them down. Oh, you, nothing's going to happen. <laughs> it's going to be supernatural if anything happens, and now that you're thinking about whether or not you're going to let them down, whether they're going to get their dollar's worth, whether they're going to get their time properly spent. You've got to be totally detached from that realm. God, the Holy Spirit. <laughs> would teach you how to not be attached to you so much. Jesus says, you can do nothing without me. Everything about the world around you, everything about culture around you, everything about society around you is teaching you how to be the best, how to do it, how to rely upon yourself. If you don't get it done, who's going to do it for you? You, do it for you. you know, you got to be concerned about number one. You're number one. Everybody else is number two. And I'm, and I'm down from there. Totally detached to where they say, "What? Well, I don't live anymore. I've been, given this, I've been given this amazing commandment. You know what God commanded me to do? He commanded me to live his life. That is wild. He commanded me to live in him, to be in him. Yeah. What a commandment. He commanded me to be empowered. He commanded me to receive the Holy Ghost. He commanded me to be happy. He commanded me to glorify Him in my body and my spirit. Look at all these commandments. People are so caught away in the don'ts. My goodness, you can get captivated by the do's and the don'ts won't even matter anymore. It's the same way today. We're living in the same abundance of God's love and provision. Like Adam, he could have had anything. He had all do's and one don'ts and he was fixated on the don't. And it ultimately resulted in such disaster. What if we got just go ahead and just get all captivated with the dues? Hallelujah. Look into the author and finisher of our faith. How we, keep our eyes focused on him. Recognize he's the one who planted. It's his idea. He's commissioned me and charged me to do it. And now all I'm doing is learning how to give myself over to complete abandonment to do it. That's what consecration is about. We got all these ideas about what consecration means. That's what it means. It means to give yourself completely over to living the life and ministry of Jesus. It's not about all these other things. It's not about all the don'ts. It's about the do's. Hello. 
And it works within us a total human detachment from our own self to say, I no longer live, nevertheless I live, but not me. I no longer live, nevertheless I live, but it's not me alive, it's Christ. I've given myself over completely to a place that the Holy Ghost has brought me to and teaches me to live in with a consciousness and a self-awareness that it's God that lives here, not me. It's God at work here in the midst of me. It's the beauty of relationship. You know, one of the things I love about purity and holiness is that it causes such pristine discernment. It's the light. You know, when you begin to get compromised with sin, you come into a realm of darkness, you don't know what's really what's going on. You've got all the weirdest ideas. You've got every thought going through your head about whether people like you, don't like you. You live in some form of, you live in one-third offense, one-third rejection, and one-third fear. You're always on the bubble. <laughs> always trying to prove something. Always got to prove it again. Always, oh, it's just such pressure. Every time we get up, we got to prove our ministry again. You might have to, but not me. <laughs> I'm, I'm just living, I'm having fun. Hallelujah. Like it or not, I'm just in over here just describing what God said we get to be and giving myself completely over to being it and doing it. I don't, I'm not responsible for the consequences of obeying God. He's responsible for the consequences of obeying him. And he's told us what's going to be if we obey him. Hallelujah. I mean, there were times, there were many examples in the Bible. There's many examples in people's lives where they've obeyed God and there was an interim between that obedience and the blessing. That obedience and the promotion. That obedience and all the things that God had promised. But I'm going to tell you right now, God's word never failed. He has a right to take us through the process of whatever he needs to take us through to bring us to a place of absolutely trusting him. And faith is nothing but supernatural trust. And Abraham models trust in God and takes it to a level that God says concerning him in Romans chapter 4 that he's the father of faith. Come on. The father of everyone who walks in faith in that sense. Of course, we know that God the father is the father of faith is the one who originated and gave birth to it. But you know, Abraham as a father is a model of it. Hallelujah. A, sh a human model of it. Abraham failed in it. Huh? Uh, forgive me. Adam failed in it. Abraham succeeded in it. Abraham failed. Where did he fail? Trust in God. Simple trust. Trust. Simple little trust that said, listen, you a liar, shut up. You a liar, we're not believing a single thing that you have to say, you liar. God ain't hiding nothing from us. He's our father and as a friend and our companion. In fact, he's getting ready to come, and I feel sorry for you when he gets here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Taking the wheels off your chariot real quick. <laughs> huh? Abraham succeeded where Adam failed. Jesus came and personified it and said, come live in me. See, this is the challenge that we have to deal with in the realms of our thinking. There's all kinds of assailing thoughts opposing this, all kinds of human behavior. I'm sorry that you, many people got wrong examples from their parents. I'm gave wrong examples to my children, cried out to God to make those examples go away, disappear and erase them and put them instead the right example so that we can begin to model for our kids what it looks like to walk in full abandonment to God so that we just don't have one generation after another generation after another generation just repeating the same thing. Finally, God's people get it just about the time they die, but their kids have already lived in the consequences of their dysfunctionality. Are you listening to me? Maybe they make an inch towards God more than their parents did. And it's just inching by inch, you know, when we got, got whole light years of, of travel for us in a lifetime, as it were. Are you with me? He got whole galaxies of travel, as it were. I mean, because it's just the expanse of all that he has for us. The unlimited blessings of the anointing and the mantle that we've received. When we begin to embrace the identity of God that he's given to us in the ministry and the life of Jesus that he's commissioned us and commanded us to live and said any other life doesn't count. So he said over and again with so many different other words, so many different words, any other kind of life doesn't even matter anything. If you want to be my disciples, you come and imitate me. You take up your cross, you deny yourself and imitate me. As beloved children, imitate God. Ephesians 5.1. Well, what does that look like? Being on the worship team? No, that's imitating angels. You know what I'm saying to you over here? Huh? That's imitating angels. That's not imitating God. God does signs, waters, miracles. 
God sets people free. God comes with love, moves with compassion, does all the things that Jesus did, who is a full manifestation of the power of God bodily. Hallelujah. And he says to you and me, do it. And we look at each other going, who, me? Well, what, how am I supposed to do that? I've been being beat up since I was in preschool. I've been being told how unable I, may, I am and unfit I am and how I'm, um, I, you know, I'm barely, barely keeping up with those who are average. We've got all these created ideas about ourselves from our experience, from those things that people have imposed upon us. Father wants to rewrite the definition of your life. Papa, God wants to redefine you. Hallelujah. The dictionary is the Bible. Hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus came and modeled it for us. People want to make all these various different things so everybody can fit in. No. The way's straight. It's narrow. God didn't make it so everybody can fit in and feel comfortable. While you serve your own self, live your own life, do most of what God said for you not to do, and then somebody tells you you write with God and on your way to heaven, I don't believe that person is making heaven and said it. Because if you call one of the least of these to stumble, if you tell one person that they write when they wrong, you set one wrong thing before them, God says better than you didn't even enter into life. You should have, before you did that, you should have gone and commit suicide. People go, did God say that? Suicide? Yeah. Yeah, he did. <laughs> if you're going to tie a rope around your neck <laughs> on one end, and on the other end, it's a millstone, and you're going to take the millstone, and you're going to throw it over the boat, and you're going behind it, we call that suicide. <laughs> Papa said, this is how radical he is about it. It would have been better for you had to commit suicide than to mislead somebody than to create the offense. The scandalon. The Greek, the Greek word is scandalon. To create the scandalon. To say, you're right. We're going to make room for you to fit. No, no, no. The only room is Jesus. The only fit is the Holy Ghost. He's the fit. He's the fit, people. Hallelujah. 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 You the hand, he's the glove. He's the, it's the <laughs> only fit. Rather, he's the hand, you the glove. It's the only fit. It's the only fit. We can then just get simple with this. Understand, if we will embrace this, if we will take the empowerment and the commission, he gives a requirement on it. After that, you've been born again. After you've been born of the Spirit and made the temple of the living God, God the Father dwells in you, and Christ Jesus dwells in you, and the Holy Ghost dwells in you, all from an act of being born again, born of the Spirit, washed with water, regeneration, renewing of the Holy Ghost, having been made a new creation, old things have passed away, and oh, behold, all things are new, having now being in Christ where there is now no condemnation. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. This is a wonderful thing that God did for us. He just said, be baptized with the Holy Ghost, be endued with power from on high. Come on, people. Come on, listen. You think about it. Matthew chapter 9, Jesus gave them power and authority. The scripture says, gave them power and authority over all unclean spirits to cast them out and all to cure all diseases. And yet he tells that company of people that you ain't able yet just to be, just bring it down in a nice country fitted way. You are, don't, you are not equipped yet. You got to go and tarry in Jerusalem until you're baptized. Hallelujah. With the Holy Ghost, you receive power from on high. This is taking it up another level. They already had all power and authority in Christ Jesus over all unclean spirits to cast them out. Come on, people. Come on, people. Quit waiting for the day and get it. Quit trying to make yourself acceptable and able and go ahead and receive it. Because just like the blood made you fit to step into the holies of holies, the Holy Ghost has begun this work in you. I'm going to tell you right now, He's empowered us. He's equipped us with the same kind of grace and says, do it, do it. Mature in it, do it. Go with it. Come on, go. People sitting around waiting. What would have it been like if you would have been with Jesus and He said, go? Based on your response right now. How many people would have left the meeting that night and went home instead of going? Think about it, people. Let's time change that around. Let's go ahead and, because the Lord's going to put us in the same category. He's going to put us in the same condition. He's going to say, he's going to look at you and he's going to go, Peter went, you didn't. I'm not talking about something really here now, don't misunderstand me. I'm not talking about some kind of work salvation. Don't misunderstand me. 
I'm not limited to the grace and the mercy of God. I'm talking about Father having some people that are going to obey Him and represent Him in the earth and be the heavenly people who are going to be people who are going to respond to His empowerment, His grace, His goodness, all the gifts and all the blessings that He's showered upon us and quit complaining. The only reason you have to complain is because you're not, you're not exercising in all the Papa has given us. Are you with me? You spend enough time with Him, loving on Him, talking to Him, worshiping Him, your heart's going to get filled with excitement about obeying Him. Huh? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. You can't stay long in the temple of God and not hear Him say who will go for us. I bet you Isaiah, Isaiah was already going to begin with. He was already going. And I'm certain that, that all that he was seeing, it, sir, I'm not, no, no, it wasn't more than five minutes. All that can happen in less than five minutes. You can read it inside of 10 seconds. The whole thing, Isaiah chapter 6, you can read it inside of 10 seconds. Eh? He's not standing there long. Eh? And the Lord says, who will go for us? That's what's going to happen. You get in his presence. He wants to empower you. He wants to enrich you. He's... He, he's He's looking to crown you with authority. People want to have all the other benefits and all the other blessings and all of the other uh, resources of heaven, and they're not doing nothing. What, why do you? Why? Oh, well, when you give it to me, then I'm going to do something. God says, based upon my experience with everybody since Adam, which is several billion people, you're not going to do anything with it once you get all resources any more than what you're going to do right now. I discovered if Father would ever say something like that, that the people that are going to be resourced to do anything with what I'm going to give them are going to obey first. God retains all right to revelation, and as you obey, he reveals. It is true. He gave a little bit of revelation to you that Jesus Christ is Lord and that you needed him, and you obeyed. He may have worked a great miracle for you, didn't he? He brought forth a new creation. doesn't stop there either. That's just the beginning. That's day, that's moment number one. Ha! <laughs> That's not even your first 24 hours. Praise God. All you got to do is stop being who you are, believing what you believe, start letting everything about your life being conformed to Him. I don't want anything on me that looks like the world. I'm sorry the world made these clothes. But I don't look like the world. Huh? I don't look like no Philistine. Huh? I don't act like the world. Are you listening to me? Yet? I don't have Ammonite things at my house. You know what I'm saying. Huh? <laughs> I'm, I'm giving myself over to, to holy following after God. I want to be conformed in every way to the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm passionate about it. I'm hungry for it. There's, he shall feed me. He shall feed me. He shall feed me with the heavenly manna. Whew. They had manna rained down on them every day. But I'm eating heavenly manna. I'm eating a communion that comes from the word of God, the living word, Christ Jesus. I am being fed Christ Jesus. I'm being fed Christ Jesus, Lord. I'm being fed his person, his life, his being, the reality of who he is and what he's given and the, and the very life that's, that he consists by, by which all things are made and by which all things consist. That's my daily diet. Hallelujah. Come on, people. It's a, you know, when we repent, we repent, we come to the altar. That is the moment in time we consecrated ourselves to commit. Are you listening to me? To every day get up and say, Lord, here I am to walk with you, to do it your way. I want to learn. Teach me. Make me sensitive. Show me how to do this. I'm going to give myself to happy. I'm going to get happy right now. If I don't feel happy, start dancing. If you're not feeling happy, quickly dance it. Go dance in the mirror. You'll start laughing at yourself if nothing else. And you'll start getting happy. Like you're committed to obedience on the basic levels. You become detached. What keeps you from happy? Because you are attached to all the circumstances that are clouding you. It's a demonic force. It has nothing to do with the reign of God. It has nothing to do with the reign of spirit. You're compromised and you're conflicted because all this stuff's coming at you right, left, and center saying you're going to fail. You can't make it. You're under the pressure. you got this to do and that to do. you got this obligation, that obligation, and this thing didn't work. This thing did work. Get out of that mess. Because as far as I'm concerned, that Samson going round and round, grinding meal for the Philistines. Hair cut off, covenant's not working. You have to understand, is the covenant working for you? Because the covenant's power. The blood and the bread. The covenant is the covenant working for you. The life covenant is working for you. I got all these people with these ideas. You see them on TV, I've seen them behind closed doors. Listen to me. All these ideas. You've heard them on the radio. 
I've been with them driving down the car, living with them for weeks. Listen to me. Don't follow the frame of men. You follow the word of God. Don't follow ideas. Boy, you don't know what that's made of. <laughs> You're listening to me. I've said to people that uh, have had platforms where everybody, it seems like, in the world has heard them and said, well, listen, this is what you need to do. This is what the Word of God says to do. Oh, that's for preaching. That's to say that's not for living. Give me a break. What are you talking about, man? It's for living. What? I'm not going to go into it any further than that. I'm just saying, you need to get to, you let the Word of God define your life. Right? Your, let Christ, Christ Jesus has written our life. Come on, man. I'm not following anybody except for Jesus. And everybody who looks like him, and you know what? And he had received the oil of gladness above all of us fellows. God anointed him with the oil of gladness. So if God anointed him with the oil of gladness, are you with me? Hebrews chapter 2. God anointed him with the oil of gladness. Are you with me? Hebrews chapter 1, forgive me. And God, we know at the same time God anointed him with the Holy Ghost and power. And we can understand that those two words are related, aren't they? Yes. Yep. Don't take a big stretch of the imagination either. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to give myself to these things. I'm not going to be conflicted. I'm going to get detached. I'm going to learn how to shut all that stuff down, cast all my cares upon him instead of being conflicted with all the cares of this life. I'm going to learn how to take the weapons of my warfare and deal with them appropriately as God has told me and cast down everything that is contrary to the knowledge of who Jesus is and who I am in him. And this is the way to grow and mature and find ourselves standing before the masses of people. I'm getting ready to go meet with Fidel Castro. I'm not going to cast the devil out of Castro. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to lead him in prayer. I'm going to lay my hands on him. I'm going to tell him. When I walk in the room, I say, I've come here so that you can make heaven. That's how I'm going to greet him. I already see it. It's already happened. I, I, know, I knew when I went to Cuba a couple of weeks ago that I would be meeting with Raul Castro. I mean, I tell you right now, as soon as I got there, as soon as I got into Cuba, I lay down on the bed and I have a dream and I'm with Raul Castro all night long and we became the best friends we became brothers, just, it, you know, they say he's the richest man in the world because basically he owns everything in Cuba, right? Because he's a dictator. You know, he don't like that, but, you know, as, as I've heard it. But, you know, I know this. I feel this. I know what's going to happen in Kashmir. I know. Oh, the Kashmir is mine. I went in there, and everywhere I went, I just had favor. People say, you can't go there. I mean, I was telling people the other day, after a guy, I, I, I had a guy... When I, many times I get dropped off the airport, I just have lifts pick me up because it's so convenient. And the lift driver was uh, an Afghan, uh, Af uh, Afghan from Afghanistan, been here for about three years, and was getting ready to go back to Afghanistan, Kabul, in a couple months. And, and I said, yeah, we just got back from Kashmir. He says, Kashmir? It's dangerous to go there. You know, it's pretty ironic, you know. The, the Afghanistan guy going, it's dangerous. We don't ever go there. <laughs> I, went, I went to Kashmir and everybody, I just, I had favor. I just, I had, I literally, I had ranking military people walking up to me just out of nowhere, grabbing me, shaking my hand. I promise you. It was, it was just, it was just one of those things. Ann standing beside of me and it's just one of those things. We just look at each other because there's no reason for him to do this. It's just God speaking to me. The guy probably had no idea why he was so attracted to me. And it didn't happen just once. It happened several times. Just grabbing me, shaking my hand. Holding my hand. Where are you from? I know what's going to happen when we go into Kashmir and do a mass evangelism crusade. I'm totally detached. I'm in heaven. I'm living out the dream life. I'm going in Christ's stead. Huh? God has commanded me to live his life. Ha! He's commanded me to be in him. What a command. <laughs> Dwell in me. Some people are threatened by this. Some people are threatened. You know, well, all the wonderful things that the Lord says, be holy, even as I'm holy. They're threatened by that. I'm like, I'm empowered. <laughs> Glorify me in your body and your spirit. They're threatened. I'm empowered. Yay! Be perfect. Woo! People are threatened by that. They listen to it wrong. They listen based upon their experience. Hey, you don't want to lose her. Maybe he does. <laughs> They're listening based upon their experience and their judgments. The things that they've been through, their experience formed their judgments, formed how they want to hear. Paul wants to empower us. Huh? He don't want to threaten us. He's not looking for us to do it. Ha <laughs> ha. You know. Be holy even as I am holy. And you're going to do that. Right. Ha. 
be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. Pa Papa looks at Abraham and he says, I am El Shaddai. I am El Shaddai, which means I am the sovereign almighty. I am the sovereign one. I uphold everything. It's all under my charge. I created it all works by me. That's what I mean. I'm El Shaddai. Walk before me and be perfect. Abraham wasn't threatened. He was going, woo! Huh? Why? Because he's being empowered by the word who brought everything into creation. God speaks and it creates it. You know, God speaks and the anointing goes forth and you're energized with supernatural strength to do it and to be it. When we rely on him, it's time to sh make the shift. Live by his blood. <laughs> Live by his flesh. Come on. Hallelujah. Drink this blood. Eat this flesh. Dwell in him. Hallelujah. This is eternal life. Hallelujah. When we find ourselves failing, when we find ourselves falling short, when we find ourselves not getting it done right, lay hold on Him. Cleave to Him. Lay hold on the, uh, the strength of the altar, Christ Jesus. Cry out to God. Say, thank you, Father, for cleansing me. And thank you for the precious blood that cleanses me and washes me, that you love me, oh God, no matter who I am, where I'm at, what I'm doing. And the Holy Ghost, strengthen me. Make me smart. I don't want to be stupid no more. I'm tired of being the dummy in the class. <laughs> Those are good prayers. Papa likes it real. Amen. He likes it real. He's not, Father's never been impressed with your vocabulary. <laughs> he's interested in the affections of a heart. He likes the kisses and the hugs. We think he's impressed with vocabulary. Right? Don't you just hate it when somebody goes to prayer and you know they're just talking to you? He's not talking to God. They're just talking, it's just a prayer is an auditory development for the audience. You know, listen to me. Give me a break. Come on, let's just, let's just get real with God. Let's just be real with Him. Let's just recognize that He's here to help us. He's here to strengthen us. He's here to make our way perfect. He, the blood that cleansed us at the first goes on cleansing us to this day. Pray God that the Holy Ghost has started us is the Holy Ghost that perfects us and matures us. That God who started the work will complete it. He don't do no half job. Oh, I don't like that one. I just, just put that one away. We're going to come back to that one later. Like an old eccentric sculptor, you know, sculpturist or whatever. And they starts on something and gets the eyes in there and says, I'm tired of this one. Let's go to the next one. No, Father completes his work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Complete your work, oh God, here. I am complete in him. I am complete in him. But I am being matured into every dimension of everything that he has. Because why? He's made me at this moment in time his heir. And he's made you his heir. Not an, look, we get to be heirs later, but we get to be heirs right now too. Huh? If we're willing to obey God and do what he's commissioned us to do. And co-inheritors with Jesus. For now, come on, man, let's shake the nations. Let's get on with it. Hallelujah. I mean, I'm, I'm so blessed in Iowa. I'm preaching, I don't know, four or five places. How many priest races am I pre preaching in Iowa? Four places? Huh? Four. I'm preaching four places in Iowa. He did the schedule there for those guys, but so I'm asking him. But at any rate, someone says, how's Randy know how many places he's preaching? He don't even know. But at any rate, those people, they just, I love it. I mean, I saw a little glimpse of it. They sent me a text message. Revival comes to Iowa. They already ready. You think Father's going to let them down? I'm not, I'm not under any pressure. Oh, no, God. Oh, no. Oh, no, what are we going to say? Well, what are we going to preach? Oh, what if they're disappointed? Ain't nothing going to happen if I'm in that realm. I'm not going to be in that realm. I was in that realm many years ago. I put that away a long time ago. To just go ahead and embrace this God who does work. Hallelujah. It's Christ in me, my confidence of glory. Hmm? I got a confidence of glory. That glory, signs, wonders, the demonstration of the power of God will be expressed in me. Christ Jesus is here. He's, I'm the temple of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I'm being led by the Spirit, walking in the Spirit. I've been empowered by God, commissioned by God. Just, you wonder how effective His Word is? Tonight when you walk outside, you might not be able to see much here. But we'll try to look up in the sky and get past all the other lights. Oh, if you just go out in the woods or go up in the mountains, look up in the sky. Have to get out of the city. Look up in the sky. Got to get out of Babylon. <laughs> look up in the sky. Huh? Well, there's another one for you. Somebody said, oh, this is Eden. Yeah, that's based upon what you're doing, your experience and the way you're perceiving things. Are you listening to me? But just go up in the mountains, look up in the sky. Look at all that mass creation, that beauty, that splinter. Boy, you get your eye underneath it. 
one, a really good telescope. I've got a telescope, and it's got, you know, a thousand different programs in it. And you just set it up, get it set up, just to take long. And this program, whatever you want to go, wherever you want to go, and it'll set up on that. You look in that thing, and it's like, whoa. It's just this whole universe <laughs> of solar systems. This whole universe. And we can't even see, but just not even really past, much past our solar system. Our galaxy, rather. We can't really see much past our galaxy. And it just goes on. Somebody said there's 100,000 galaxies. A little over 100,000 galaxies. That's like somebody saying there's a little over 1,250 stars. <laughs> His creation reveals who He is. And he's eternal. So no matter how much they polish the lens of the telescope or how much they increase the magnitude of the photomultiplier tube, it's just going to keep on going. It won't be long and they'll have to change the whole theory of the Big Bang because they'll get to that point and they'll be able to see at the moment in time that they should be able to see the outer envelope. And it's, what? It's not there? It's just more galaxies? And then Stephen Hawking can come up with a new kind of black hole This one's going to, this one's going to actually invert everything back out to the outer limit. It went in the black hole and came out the other side. And it's going to be some crazy idea, you know, that everybody's going to go, wow, brilliant, brilliant. And he can push some numbers around and solve a few equations. He's a genius. Now the brilliance, the beauty, the splendor, the creative power of life is right here in our mouths. Right here in our mouths and our heart, the word of faith. Hallelujah. Where we can say to someone who's tormented by and vexed by evil spirits, go free in Jesus' name and immediately you stay free. Hmm? My wife told me that, that there was a picture. I said the other day, I wish that there had been a picture captured of this young guy in India because he was just so, you could see the oppression and demon power all over him. And then right after he got up off the ground, his face was radiating with freedom and just life and joy. I mean, that, the privilege of getting to do that is simply because we become totally detached. We're no longer wrapped up in our self-interest where all of human compassion and all the human sympathy and all the human self-reliance and all that stuff exists. We're fully in, in, enveloped by the person Almighty God. So we grab a hold of the crippled and we snatch them out of their wheelchairs and those people in pain and we jerk them right out of their problem. Hallelujah. I, I'm going to tell you the other night, I was, uh, I can't remember where I was, but there was a person that came to me and they had a busted arm. And I knew what the Lord told me to do, but because I was new and I didn't know everybody that was there, I allowed myself to be compromised with self-consciousness. God told me to grab his arm and jerk him around by it. And I didn't do it. Huh? You know, we were in Cuba and uh, Sandy was sharing the story that, uh, that of what happened with you guys in Columbia. They started off with like three, four hundred people in the meeting, right? Ended up with around 5,000 people. Well, what happened was Jimmy just lost his mind. And a guy came there, wasn't saved, family wasn't saved. They're just kind of looking. And Jimmy had a divine unction to spit in his eyes because he was blind. So he said, oh, Sandy, I feel like I'm supposed to spit in his eyes. And Sandy says, really? <laughs> Are you sure? He said, yeah, I feel it. So he, <laughs> Detached. 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 That's why it went from 400 to 5,000, because he could see after he got the spit. Hallelujah. To become childlike. <laughs> in the Hispanic man in Colombia's eyes. Who don't know what's going on. He never read in the Bible. He never heard the sermon about the spit. Huh? And the dirt. And the mud. Put in, he just got this white boy. He's got this, he's got this gringo. He's got this... Spitting on it now, saying, can you see? 
<laughs> Woo! Detached. The more we become, this is for me, I've seen it over and again. You know, it's so sad it takes so long for us to learn the lessons, but learn them. People just get so immersed, so way out there in the Holy Ghost because I'm telling you, Father won't let you, He won't let you down. He won't let you down. And He's going he's gonna to do things. He's going to tell us to do things. He's going to charge us to do things that really is about being detached from human interest, human pressure, the things that are about us, that try to constrain us to do it our own way. It's where, it's where everybody loses out on God and, and the things that God has for their life. It's where Saul lost out. You know, he's there waiting for Samuel to show up and Samuel doesn't show up. And now he's all under the pressure because all of the people that are on his side and his army are starting to, you know, they're starting to leave. It's tough when your people are starting to take off and you need them for fighting. And the Philistines are seeing your folks going, breaking ranks. And now they're starting to move in on you. And he's like, man, we got to get this sacrifice done. Where's Samuel? He's still not here. I'll make the sacrifice myself. He wasn't willing to rely on, under pressure so many times under pressure at that moment in time, we no longer rely upon God and we begin to do it on our own. We think we've got to make it happen. We don't make it happen. We just stand by and watch what God does. We stand. I don't expect anything but signs, wonders, and miracles. I'm not going to tell you how it's going to happen. I don't know if people are going to fall down, stand up, where they're going to, you know, fly away, whatever. I don't know. And I don't, I'm, not, there's nothing, I'm not under any constraint of having some kind of expectation. I just know God's working the miracle. I'm going to stand by, back and watch God. It's not going to be whipped up. I don't, I don't need somebody doing the keys for me. I had a guy in Cuba, man. I'm telling you, I started praying. I started preaching, and, and I would say something. And he'd go, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> and the first time I, I let it go, I let it, he's a great pianist. I just let it go. You know, I make a point. It's like, <laughs> and then the second time it happened, it's like, hey, man, you can't do that. I don't need that. Please, I didn't want to embarrass him. I'm in the house I've never been in before with people I've never been around. But I don't need that, man. I don't need nothing. We don't need to whip this thing up. We don't need to make anything happen. God's here. He's big. Let's just stand watch him and do it. Let's get out of the way. Let God be God. This is it, people. The school of the Spirit. This is the crucible you're in. This is the crucible you're in, and you want to learn it. You want to learn it when it comes to house, clothing, when it comes to your financial needs, your spiritual needs, whatever it is, every dimension of your life. Just trust God. Say, Father, let's just watch what, let's just watch what Papa will do. You know, I had something hit me today. I, I said, just, let's just watch what God, I just thrust it in the hands of God. I mean, I've learned how to do that. Learn how to just make that your natural response because it's not going to be. You've under been under the pressure of situation and things around you that's conditioned you to go and try to make to be your own provider, your own protector, your own perfecter. Stop it. Just start having something real simple. Let's watch what God will do. Father's going to take care of it. Everybody might think you're just completely, you know, unresponsible or whatever. Don't worry about it. Watch what God will do. Because I'm telling you right now, Father stands up and listens to that. He goes, what? Well, you, you're putting your complete trust in me? Even if it means that you might be kicked out of your house? Even if it means that you might not have food to eat? Even if it means that you might be taken prisoner or captive or whatever? Or might even lose your life? Hmm. You know, when we were in India, you know, I laid down to go to bed in India, and we were in... Uh, I can't remember if we were in Vizawada or whether we were in Hyderabad, but we we're getting ready to go to Kashmir. And you know, the questions come. Oh, you're just going to Kashmir because you're trying to be something special. This ain't God and you're going to die. They're going to kill you as soon as you get there. Just because of your pride. How are you going to handle that? Huh? What do you do? Yeah, you stupid devil. Do you think I believe, I believe this is God talking to me? <laughs> Are you with me? Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm going to tell you right now, the more you get in it, the more you get in it, the more you're going to get harassed if, you're, if you allow them to harass you. It's time to just be able to be in charge, shut the powers of darkness down. Huh? Be seated together with Christ Jesus, far above all principalities, powers, and might, and dominion, where Satan got to obey everything you say. Hmm? If I mess up, look at this. Are you ready? Are you ready for this? 
if I mess up and trip up and fail at something, Satan's still got to obey me. Huh? He does. Because God's in charge and I'm in him. Hallelujah. The only way Satan didn't have to obey me is if somehow I got out of God and I'm not planning on leaving anytime soon. In fact, I'm not planning on leaving anytime forever. Amen. 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 Come on, can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? Can you get some boldness? Because Satan's coming around as an accuser and as a slanderer. As someone who's got the big mirror. He's always putting it up in front of you. See? Look at you. See? You can't do nothing. See? Huh? Father's always pointing to Jesus, saying, you can do all things. To Christ who strengthens you. Hallelujah. Have you, said, have, you, have you found yourself not being able to do nothing? Uh, good. Without him, you could do nothing. So get in him. Do everything. Amen. Hallelujah. Get totally detached. Say detached. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody can bring some painful thing to you. I pray in Jesus' name you're fully charged up with the anointing. Say, you grab that thing and jerk it around. Say, how's it feel now? Be healed, Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. I, I really believe, you know, after walking with the Lord and being allowed to see the miracles and signs and wonders that we've been allowed to see, and we know we're going to see so much, so much more, but, and so many greater things. But I really believe that it's part of why Wigglesworth behaved as he did. And, you know, because he, he, he was basically throwing down all of the opinions that were around him. The attending physician that's trying to take care of the guy who's dying with stomach cancer and trying to explain how feeble he is. And Wigglesworth just punches him in the stomach. <laughs> And they said it was no gentle blow. <laughs> and the doctor started screaming, You killed him! <laughs> you killed him! <laughs> Wigglesworth was so unattached, so detached, he was already down praying for the next person when the guy finally was up walking around, completely healed. He just moved right on. The doctor's screaming, you killed him, and the man's recovering, getting up off the thing, saying, I'm totally healed. <laughs> Wigglesworth wasn't waiting around. He was on next. Come on, people. Come on, man. Because it's about what God does. It's not about us hovering over it. And do you feel better now? Now I'm going to pray a little bit more. How do you feel? Oh, God, please. Oh, God. <laughs> Oh, God, don't let me down. <laughs> Are you with me? Come on, get yourself, get yourself in a promoted per position from Joshua commanding the moon and the sun not to move. He didn't get down on his knees and said, Oh, God, if you can hear us in heaven, if you've got time to listen. I know, Lord, I've been doing everything properly. I know, Father God, that I've been doing everything right. But if somehow, in some way, you could hear me at this moment in time, I just ask you to stop the sun. <laughs> it would have, the sun would have kept going. It's not the prayer of faith. Prayer of faith is, that's what, is that prayer issued forth from us by the Holy Ghost. And it sounds like authority. It sounds like, sun, don't you take another, don't you move one bit. Moon, don't you move one bit. Stay right where you're at. And the Lord has promoted us from there. With greater authority. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. You just go out and you cast out devils. I don't care about what anybody has to say about it. The Lord, the Lord gives you the insight to see the, op the operation of the demonic powers. You take authority over it. In every context. I've been in situations where I've watched. I've been down in the barrio Logan and watched where the Trentes were standing on one side of the street. The Red Steps on the other. And they were doing their thing, and I knew that a, a fight was getting ready to go down. And I bound the thing in the name of Jesus. You spirit of violence, I command you to go now in Jesus' name. And immediately they walked away. They disassembled. They had no idea why they disassembled. I took care of in the realms of the spirit. They were occupying their emotions and their feelings and their attitudes and what they were thinking. And so can you, because God's put us in charge. He's given to us the keys to the kingdom. He's given to us 
the authority of the kingdom to advance the gospel, to go everywhere, to make disciples out of nations. Come on. Amen. We're just going to have to let God define us. Amen. Yes, amen. 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 Let God define you. Let God define you. Yes, and his Bible is the dictionary. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Anybody sick, hurting, tormented, aggravated, upset, <laughs> in need of help? In need of help. In need of comfort. God, the Holy Ghost, the Comforter is here. He'll heal you right now. touch you right now. Whatever you need, just receive because the presence of Jesus is here. The power of God. There is a wellspring on the inside of you. I'm telling you right now, there's a treasure on the inside of you with wealth and riches, without limit to supply. Whatever you have need of physically, spiritually, materially, whatever you have need of right here in this place, you're watching by web right now or on YouTube, I'm going to tell you, he's here, his presence is here, he's going to supply whatever you have need of right out of the innermost part of your being unto him who is able super abundantly to do above all that you can think or ask according to the power that is at work right on the inside of you right now, right out of your belly, right out of the riches of the treasure of God's divine power that is on the inside of you right now. I'm telling you, you're not walking around empty. You're filled to overflowing. Rivers of God are pouring out of you. Prophesying the word of faith is not some foreign place, some faraway place, some in need of someone to go get it. It's near you, it's not far from you, it's not out of your reach, it's not beyond your ability, but in your heart and in your mouth. Amen. Speak it. Speak it. Amen. Everybody, would you just stand with me and just praise the Lord and just stand with me and praise Him? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Father, right now for the miracle. Thank you right now for the miracle. Thank you right now for the supernatural supply of the Spirit. Thank you, Father, for divine provision right now in Jesus' name. Let your word be effective in every life and every heart. Hallelujah. 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 Let the weak say I'm strong. Hallelujah. Let the poor say I'm rich. <laughs> Let the sick say I'm healed. Hallelujah. Let the empty say I'm filled. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Kirimama mandaya rasata koya la basahaya pravamana nanea fatani. Holy Spirit, we give ourselves completely over to you to be taught of you, to be led by you, to be shaped by you, to be developed by you, to be matured and perfected by you, O oh God, so that every part of our life is all about heaven. It's not about earth. It's about you, not about us. It's about Jesus, not about me. It's about the life that you gave, not the life that I had. Oh God, we thank you right now, Father, for such wisdom and revelation, such knowledge in you. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Ha, ha, ha. Hallelujah. Ha, 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 ha. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't be compromised. Be joyful. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't be compromised. Walk in abundance of peace. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for enlarging every life here and every ministry here. Thank you, Father, for expanding the influence of every person standing in this place. I thank you, Father, for taking every life and making them fruitful. I thank you, Father, for purging them that they might be able to bring forth more fruit also. We thank you, Father, for increase in revelation, increase in knowledge, increase in the divine ability of operating in the gifts of the Spirit and the working and the operation of your power, Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, Father, we thank you.
thank you that each one will be turned into a thousand. Each one turned into a thousand. Oh God, each one turned into a thousand. Oh God, and even in and more. As great outpourings of your spirit, as great exploits of your spirit, as great signs and wonders are done by your mighty power, oh God, as each person humbles himself under your mighty hand, oh God, and allows you to be who you said you'll be, and allows you to do the work, oh God, that you're fashioning right now in our lives. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Rabba Basikiti Ramahara. Hallelujah. Mama Nana Zada Yebre Baha. Hallelujah. 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 Keep the zeal you had from the first day that you were born. Again, get that zeal. If you don't have it, get it. Keep it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep it. Hallelujah. It's a big part of the power of God being able to work through you. The excitement of the first six months of salvation. Hallelujah. Lean brung done to keep it kind of most by building yourself up in your most holy faith, uh, not getting overwhelmed by situations around you. Just keep it, hallelujah, by reading the word, hallelujah, and believing it like the first time you ever read it, read it before. By doing what Jesus said and just doing it more, forget about the results. Don't even think about it. You're just totally detached. It all belongs to Father. Whatever happens is what He did, not what you did. Your assignment is to obey God, pray for the sick, and lay hands on the sick. Father, take care of the rest. Amen. Totally detached. Hallelujah. Amen. Do it. Do it. Hallelujah. Do it. In Jesus' name. Do it. Hallelujah. Bakariposha. Do it. Marupana. Do it. Get bold. I mean, she prona. Get bold. Get bold, radical, passionate, be lion like. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Canto repunished. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for the anointing. Thank you, Father, for the signs and wonders. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, praise the name of Jesus. Oh, if you could just see right now by the, with the eyes of the Spirit and with the eyes of faith, all that God is going to do through you, that He's purposed to do through you because of the inheritance that He has in you, you just, your mind will be so blowed, you'd be so excited, you'd be going, you will not even believe what God's going to do with me. That's what you'd be telling me. You would be telling everybody, you're not, you can't even imagine what all God's going to do. He showed me. He showed me. Let God show you in His Word. Let Him show you in His Word and just get excited about it. I'm going to tell you right now, it, it will begin to happen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, I don't want to stop. I just want to keep prophesying, shouting, praising. Hallelujah. Dancing, singing. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Well, hug a bunch of people around you. Tell them that you love them. Bless them in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ho Kurashina. Hola Karasina Mona Shingaha. Hallelujah. Prote Yarimasi Putura. Play Sitorimaya. Prisitiranamusitrano Shipakuni. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.